this is the one who was not deserted by God on the day of struggle, and now wears a crown of victory for faithfulness to the Lord's command. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So today we celebrate the feast of St. George, the, the martyr for the church, someone who has been seen as a beautiful intercessor for, um, for soldiers, for the virtue of courage. Um, there's the powerful legend of St. George fighting the dragon, conquering and rescuing, or conquering the dragon and rescuing um, a, a princess who was was captured by this dragon and became this beautiful image um, that would shape a lot of the Middle Ages and that, that idea of chivalry, the idea of virtuous soldiers who had God as their king and they would fight this battle that it was for defending those who were oppressed, those who were in need, ultimately being the protector of those who couldn't protect themselves. And um, that's something that we are called to in our confirmation, to have St. George's heart, to be willing to allow um, ourselves to be equipped with the armor of God and to um, fight and wage war, but in the spirit, which is through mercy, through justice, through charity. Today, also, we can pray for um, Father Matt, my fellow brother priest, serves over at St. Patrick's in Yorkville. It's his birthday today, so we can pray for him and um, uh, just ask the Lord to, to intercede and just fill him with many graces in this new year of his life. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Amen. We are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Extolling your might, O Lord, we humbly implore you that as Saint George imitated the passion of the Lord, so he may lend us ready help in our weakness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, that if he should find any men or women belonging to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice, but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see, and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, 
get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, that he may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man, what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to imprison all who call upon your name. The Lord said to him, Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel. And I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. Laying his hands on him, he said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me. Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, things like scales fell, fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized, and when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness toward us. And the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. My flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. So two really, really important scripture passages today conversion of St. Paul and this very important moment of Eucharistic teaching in the Gospel from Jesus himself. So just a word on St. Paul and that story. 
Lord calls us to be Ananiases at different times. Notice how Ananias, his response to the Lord is, Here I am, Lord. Estoy aquí, Señor. He's open. He's ready for whatever the Lord is calling him to. And that only comes from a life of prayer. If we're not taking time each day to pray, if we're not, if we're not stretching our, our time to fill it with times of quiet, times of relationship with the Lord, then we won't hear when he actually calls us. So Ananias, first of all, is in prayer. He's, he's, um, he has a heart that's open to receive from the Lord. It still comes with a challenge. Maybe that's sometimes why we keep our hearts closed, or maybe we don't want to spend that extra time with the Lord, because maybe He might call us to something that we, we'd we rather just be ignorant of, so then we don't have to feel culpable for it. Mm-hmm. So when we're really listening and we hear the Lord say, this is what I want you to do, do we shut the door? And that might be something maybe to think about in your own heart. Do you, in a sense, shut the door first and say, I'm just going to not go as deep with you, Lord, because then I don't have to be at fault in saying to you, no, I really don't want to do this. It's kind of like just stopping your ears and saying, well, I just didn't hear anything, Lord, so you can't blame me. And Ananias has his heart open. And so he's confronted with this truth. Go to this man called Saul. I want you to pray over him. Bring him healing. And Ananias says very honestly, he's like, Lord, and it's kind of comical because he He's talking to the Lord as if the Lord doesn't know. He's like, Lord, I've heard this. I've heard this in the news from the people around that this guy has done horrible things. And he has authority to take any of us back in chains. And so Ananias is thinking, if I go to Saul, he's going to capture me and send me back. So there's that fear. The Lord reassures him, this is what I desire, I'm actually going to use him as a chosen instrument. And Ananias goes forth. You see this in a lot of, in the scriptures, whether it's Isaiah, whether it's Jeremiah, whether it's these different um, calls of the prophets. You have the Lord call, the person says, here I am. The Lord says, this is what I want you to do. The person says, I can't do this, you got the wrong person, I'm too young, or as Moses, like, I can't do this because I can't talk well, or Isaiah, I am a sinful man, St. Peter, depart from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. There's always this this shake-up in which the person is like, I can't do this. And then the Lord comes back with a certain reassurance saying, I will give you strength. This is part of my plan. Do not be afraid. And then the person accepts after that. And that's the way that the Lord works with us, too. So when you feel that, those excuses kind of well up, saying, I can't, I can't do this. I mean, I, I don't know how to talk about this stuff. I don't know the Bible well enough. I can't share Jesus with others. You know, that's a priest's job. That's a deacon's job. That, that's someone else's job. When you feel that come up, know that that's normally what happens in these vocation calls. And you have to hang on through that and say, Lord, this is what I'm feeling, yes. But wait and allow him to give you that reassurance that he will be your strength. He will be your victory. It's a way of humbling ourselves because a lot of times we start with ourselves and say, well, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. And the Lord is like, you're right, you can't without my strength. But with me, you can do all things. You're Christ who strengthens me. Ananias could have also been tempted to fall into jealousy. The Lord says, I'm going to use this person who's been pretty bad, but I'm going to actually raise him up and make him a chosen instrument. And he will suffer, but I'm going to use him in a powerful way. Notice how he doesn't say that to Ananias. He doesn't say, Ananias, I'm going to use you to bring this gospel to the nations. He just says, Ananias, 
I want you to heal this man so he can be the chosen instrument. Do you see the temptation that could have come there? Ananias could have said, wait a minute. I'm the one who's praying to you. I'm the one who's faithful to you. And you're going to choose this guy? But notice Ananias doesn't do that. He goes, he heals, and he, in a sense, disappears back into the background. He's kind of like John the Baptist in that way. John the Baptist saying, he must increase, I must decrease. Ananias understood that he's called to be an instrument in the Lord's hands, and not to work for his own glory, but he was focused on, I want your will to be done in my life, whatever that is. So Ananias is one of these little saints who is mighty. Maybe he's, you know, a big, big sort of hidden saint up in heaven. Because he did this little thing that was very tough, and he was willing to fade back into the background and not take all the glory. So let's be like Ananias. In the gospel today, we have this major confrontation. Remember, we're, we're going through all of these different, um, all these different days in which they're excited about the multiplication of the loaves and fish. They're getting ready to take him away to be king. He leaves them. He ultimately um, has the apostles go across the water. Then he walks over the water, and all of that. They get to the other side. The next morning, the people are like, "Well, where did Jesus go?" He didn't use the boat. And so they then heard that he was on the other side, so they take boats, they go over, and they're like, Lord, we, we want to keep seeing all this exciting stuff. You're the real deal. And the Lord kind of looks at them and says, I'm going to lead you on a journey, because right now you're following me just because you want stuff. You want what I can do. And the Lord says, I want you to believe in me. I want you to trust in me. Not because of the cool things that I can do, but because who I am. And ultimately, I'm going to give you something even deeper than all of this stuff on the surface. But it's going to be hard for you to understand. And that's why you have to trust me first. And he goes through this whole thing of saying, I am the bread of heaven. And he finally switches it, saying, the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And that's where we're at right now. And the Jews all of a sudden are shocked. They're, 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 they're scandalized. And they start murmuring among themselves, which is very similar to what the Israelites did in the desert when they were contending with the Lord, when they're struggling with the Lord, saying, is the Lord really here or not? This lack of trust. It's a repeat. This is kind of going back to that place in which the Lord was getting ready to have water come from the rock or bread come down from heaven, and the Jews then are quarreling, not trusting in God. This is another one of those moments in which they're starting to not trust. Because they say, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Notice how, even though sometimes different commentators, different uh, versions of Christianity would say that this whole teaching here is something more symbolic. But the Jews didn't understand it that way. They understood clearly, he's talking about giving us his flesh to eat. And then what the Lord does is really interesting, and you only see this in Greek, is he takes the words that he was using, which was eating the flesh of, um, uh, eating, yeah, eating my body, and he switches the word from a common understanding of eating to gnawing, this very, like, visceral understanding in order to say, I'm not saying it in a symbolic way. He switches, he sort of ups the ante when the people are like, you must be mistaken. And he's like, actually I'm not. And he says these words that, that are even more like in your face, this is really my flesh to eat. It's true food, it's true drink. This is what you need to believe in. 
This is what you need to say yes to, to give your amen to. If you trust me, is what the Lord is saying, then you have to trust what I'm saying here, that I'm getting ready to give you myself in such a radical way that you can't understand it except through the gift of faith. And St. Peter will see later on where he says, Lord, where else can we go? When everyone else leaves, he's like, I don't understand this, but I've learned to trust you. And so I'm going to trust the word that you're saying. And that's what we need in our life, to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Lean not on our own understanding because there's something profound and mysterious here. And we need to allow our, our soul to, to, in a sense, break open with this beautiful truth, this cry of love, that then can help us be able to say, I truly believe that this is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of the Lord. Not just intellectually, but deep within my heart. And this is something St. Faustina, um, in the Diary of Divine Mercy, had a beautiful thing that I was I'm going through the diary right now, and she said, when I receive Holy Communion, I am assured of the victory for that day. There's this beautiful gift that she understood that when I truly receive the Lord and everything that he is and have him dwell and live within me, then the Lord is winning that victory. So as you receive the whole, a Holy Communion today, ask the Lord, Lord, help me to be assured of that victory, that your love is greater than any of my weaknesses, any of my struggles. And Lord, be the one that guides me. Be the fuel in my very soul to live for you and you alone. Because I can't do it on my own, but with you, I can do all things. And now let us bring our petitions before the Lord, for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all the clergy, May the Lord richly bless them in their dedication to the church, to the preaching of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders across the world, may God multiply their efforts to end wars and work towards world peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those living with chronic illness, may the Lord grant them consolation in their suffering and patient hope for healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the Holy Spirit help us to grow in our reflection of God's mercy to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in Christ, nourished by true bread in this life, may they know eternal happiness in the next. Especially pray for the repose of the souls of Melina and Antonio Pulido. Am I been asked to offer this Mass? Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for those who risk their lives while fighting for fundamental rights under dictatorships, authoritarian regimes, even democracies in crisis. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all the intentions within Our Lady's intercessory box. We pray for all the prayers given to us online, those within the silence of our hearts. Pray in a special way for Father Matt for blessings upon him on his birthday. As we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Eternal Father, in your kindness, please hear and answer our prayers according to your wisdom. We ask through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen.
are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
we offer thee, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be pillars to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through the man with him and living here, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, for ever and ever. Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Let's pray. We have received your heavenly gifts, rejoicing at this feast day, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that we who in this divine banquet proclaim the death of your Son may merit to be partakers with the holy martyrs in his resurrection and his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him with humbly pray. Do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits. Prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession, was left unheeded. Inspired by this confidence, I fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you do I come. 